بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله خالق الخلق باسط الرزق فالق الإصباح ذي الجلال والإكرام والفضل والإنعام الحمد لله الذي بعد فلا يرى وقرب فشهد النجوى تبارك وتعالى الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد عبدك ونبيك وحبيبك وصفيك وخيرتك من خلقك وحافظ سرك ومبلغ رسالاتك أفضل وأطيب وأطهر ما صليت على أحد من العالمين وصل على أخيه ووصيه علي أمير المؤمنين وصل على الصديقة الطاهرة فاطمة سيدة نساء العالمين وصل على سبطي الرحمة وإمامي الهدى الحسن والحسين وصل اللهم على أئمة المسلمين علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي والخلف القائم الحجة المهدي أرواحنا فداه وعجل الله تعالى فرجه وسهل مخرجه وجعلنا من أنصاره وأعوانه والذابين بين يديه بإذن الله اللهم صل على محمد قال الله العظيم في محكم كتابه بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والذين هم لأماناتهم وعهدهم راعون One of the qualities of true believers is that they keep and honor their commitment and their pledges so much so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala complements in the Quran the true believers for honoring their commitment. Once you engage in a commitment, once you commit yourself to something religiously and morally, you're obligated to fulfill your commitment. And it doesn't matter who you commit yourself with. Whether the other person is Muslim or non-Muslim, it doesn't matter. Once you commit yourself to any commitment, you have to honor your commitment. Even if the other person you committed yourself to is a non-Muslim. Because one of the main principles of our religion is to teach Muslims the respect for their commitment. And it doesn't matter even if the other person is non-Muslim. So let me give you an example. In the year 7th of Hijrah, the Prophet wasallam was in Medina and he decided to go to Mecca to perform Umrah. Obviously there was so much hostilities between Muslims and Meccans at the time. But the Prophet came to Mecca to perform Umrah only, not to fight Meccans. Unfortunately, Meccans did not allow the Prophet to enter Mecca. The Prophet told them, I'm not here to fight you guys. I'm here to perform Umrah. Allow me to come in, perform Umrah along with Muslims, and I will leave peacefully. They refused. After long negotiations, the Prophet Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam reached an agreement, a peace treaty with Meccans. And there are th few items included in that treaty. That the Prophet would not launch any war against Meccans. Meccans would not launch any war against the Prophet. 
But in one of those items agreed upon between the Prophet وسلم, and the Meccans, that if someone, if a Muslim living in Mecca tried to seek refuge in Medina with the Prophet, the Prophet would not allow him. He would turn him back to Mecca. Some Muslims objected to that. And the Prophet وسلم, told Muslims, be patient. I am the messenger of Allah. I know what I'm doing. And Allah Allah will not let me down. Just listen to me, obey your leader, and things will be on your way. Few months later, when the Prophet was in Medina, a Muslim person ran away from Mecca and came to Medina seeking refuge in Medina. Few days later, Meccans sent a few of their personal guards asking the Prophet the fulfillment of his commitment that you signed on this treaty that you do not allow any person coming from Mecca to come to Medina. You will not offer any asylum to any Meccans. And there, there is a Muslim, Meccans, who sought asylum in Medina, and you have to be abide by the commitment you have signed. And the Prophet said, yes, I will commit myself to that. You can take this Muslim. Again, some Muslims were kind of perplexed on why the Prophet allows non-Muslims, Meccans, to take a Muslim refugee back to Mecca. They, he may be persecuted. And the answer by the Prophet was that I have signed on this treaty and I shall abide by it. I feel morally and religiously obligated to follow the clause of this treaty. Yes, I'm not happy about this. I'm not happy to see a Muslim being dragged back to Mecca. And yes, he might be persecuted by Meccans, but I have a higher commitment. I have signed on that treaty and I'm not going to breach it. The Muslim was taken by non-Muslims, by the Meccans. In the middle, in the midway to Mecca, the Muslims they are his enemies, of course, those Meccans. Not being abided by any treaty now because he's out of Med Mecca, out of Medina. He took advantage of their heedlessness and he ran away. He ran away. He went to a point between Mecca and Medina and he established a checkpoint where Meccans, Meccans and their caravans were being intercepted by him. Few other Muslims who were in Mecca, knowing that the Prophet being abided by the treaty may not allow them to come to Medina, they joined this man. Over time, the checkpoint was, big, was becoming big and bigger and bigger, and Meccas were in trouble now. They didn't want Muslims to go to, to Medina. Now those Muslims, those refugee Muslims, they went, near the Red Sea and they established a checkpoint when they are incept, where they are incept, intercepting Meccans caravans. They came, Meccans came to the Prophet and he said, they said, Ya Rasulullah, please let them come to Medina. The point of this story is that the Prophet as the messenger of Allah had abided himself to the treaty he signed. And that should be a lesson, not only for Muslims, but for all people of this world. That once you engage in any commitment, you sign any treaty, you have to abide to it. Breaching your commitment is not a moral equality. It's not a virtue. Indeed, it is a vice. It is a stigma. Last week, the President of the United States decided defiantly, stubbornly, and against advice from leaders from around the world, from France, 
Germany, United Kingdom, and even advisors from his own country. He withdraw unilaterally from a treatment from a treaty that was signed in 2005 by six major superpowers and Iran. 15. 2015. Now, many, many officials, current and former, they rebuked the president for doing something like this. First of all, this is a moral breach. This is something morally flawed. That once you commit yourself and your country to a treaty, you have to abide by it. Otherwise, any country upon signing a treaty, they can say we no longer abide by this treaty. And the world will turn into a jungle. Is that what our president wants to do? To turn this world into a jungle? Where the powerful, the strong would prey upon the weak? So, yes, my dear brothers and sisters, I, along millions of Americans today, and among, among them many of you, I am sure, would condemn, would condemn the act of the President of the United States by withdrawing from this treaty. Many advisors, many politicians warned the President of the United States that withdrawing from this treaty goes against the interest of the United States of America. It is not in, the, in our best interest. In fact, it goes to help and feed the interest of one country and one regime in the world, and that is the Israeli regime. Only. What do we Americans get out of withdrawing from this treaty? The president falsely claims that by withdrawing from this treaty, the world will be safer. Is that true? Is that true? No, that's not true. In fact, if anything, the world is getting more dangerous by withdrawing from this treaty, by allowing parties in the Middle East to reach the brink of a regional war that could turn in any minute into an international war. So, I believe what our president did was a truly not in the, what does not fall in the interest of our country, our great country. There are a few hawks who have been condemned by everybody in the in our administration today who have been pushing the president to do this. Hawks like John Bolton and our new uh, Secretary of State Pompeo and others. Hawks who do not put the interest of our country, the United States, in mind. Rather, they put the interest of another thug, another murderer like ben Benjamin Netanyahu in mind. And therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, we need to spread awareness among American people that what the president did does not serve the interests of this country. In fact, the president of France, Macron, said the only reason, the only reason that the president of the United States is withdrawing from this treaty is to please certain domestic policy. And you know what he means by that. We all know there are certain groups and lobbies in Washington who are benefiting from this act, not the American people. So this is very unfortunate, my dear brothers and sisters. My second comment on withdrawing, the U.S. withdrawing from this treaty is one of the reasons that the U.S. President mentioned to justify the withdrawal, U.S. withdrawal, is that because Iran is the leading destructive country in the world. 
Let me tell you who is the leading, the most leading, destructive country in the world today, in the Middle East. It is Saudi Arabia, not Iran. The best ally of Mr. Trump, the first country that he visited. It is not Iran that's spreading murder and chaos and atrocities in the Middle East. Rather, it is Saudi Arabia and Israel. Saudi Arabia has been engaged for last three years in a brutal, ruthless war against Yemeni people. 23 million Yemenis are being bombarded day in, day out by the Saudis. Who is causing the destruction in the Middle East? Iran or Saudi Arabia? Who is responsible for the death of over 15,000 Yemenis? There were video clips, yeah, today I saw video clips of women and children in Yemen screaming under the rebels, dying while they are alive. And nobody is rescuing them. Nobody is helping them. And guess who is supporting Saudi Arabia in its unjust war against the Yemeni people? The United States. With our munitions, with our weapons, with our F-15 and 14 fighter jets, we have been, Saudi Arabia have been targeting those Yemeni people. Yemeni people have been calling for help to the entire world and nobody is answering their call. It is so ironic, my dear brothers and sisters. Do you see anybody answering their call? Do you see anybody saying, let's save those people from the atrocities they are facing? Let me share something very painful and ironic with you, my dear brothers and sisters. Two days ago, in the New York Times, there was one full page ad I show you right now. Back in, on Wednesday, May 9th, two days ago. Look at this ad, my dear brothers and sisters. Full page ad. Do you know how much it cost? Over $100,000 to put one full ad, full page ad in the New York Times. Do you know what does it speak about? It speaks about saving dogs. 30 million dogs. And it is called the World Dog Alliance. There is the organization that's saying that 30 million dogs in South Asia and East Asia are in the danger of termination and annihilation. And it is calling on the world to save those dogs. You see, my dear brothers and sisters, humans have less value than dogs. Even dogs have someone to call on the world to save them. But Yemeni people have no one to call on the world to save them. See how hypocrite this world is. Obviously, I'm not saying we should kill the dogs. But what I am saying is the hypocrisy of the West has reached a very conspicuous moment where there are calls to save 30 million dogs, but there are no calls to save 23 million humans in Yemen. This is the, the hypocrisy of the West. This is the hypocrisy of the democracy we live in the West. This is the myth of human rights organizations. Where are, where are the human rights organizations? Why they don't speak up? Why they don't do something about the plight of those Yemeni people who are being killed? And instead of forcing Saudi Arabia to stop its war, instead of forcing the Wahhabi regime in Saudi Arabia to stop spreading its hate and hatred and doctrine of hatred, they are talking about Iran. Where is where is the human voice here? What are the superpowers that always boast about protecting human rights? So, my dear brothers and sisters, at least we need to bring 
this public awareness among people in this country. I would like to make two more comments and conclude. One is the regarding the recent escalation in Syria, where Israel, another aggressor, another murderer, murderous regime, has launched another war in Syria, where it launched over 60 missiles with 28 jets bombing Syria. Again, the West didn't do anything, rather they supported they supported Israel. The surprise call came from a different country. Well, we know that United Kingdom, France, the U.S. will always support Israel. They are the, the patron of the Israeli regime. That's given. But I was surprised when a foreign minister of a Muslim country, allegedly Muslim country, like Bahrain, the foreign minister of Bahrain in his Twitter defended Israel by saying Israel has the right to defend itself. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah. What a shame, what a shame. Is that how pity those Arabs become to the point that they defend the regime that has killed tens of thousands of Arabs in, from Egypt, from Lebanon, from Palestine, from Jordan, from Iraq. In those wars, 1967 and 1973, thousands, thousands of Arab Muslim soldiers were killed and they perished. Did Bahrain forget that? Did Arab regimes, did Saudi Arabia forget that? Those regimes that are allying themselves with Israel, Israel today, and defending Israel, did they forget what Israel did to the Arabs and to the Arab Ummah and, 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 and nation? They forgot that? And now all of a sudden Iran became the enemy? Iran became the target? And also, I need to mention that there was successful elections in Lebanon. And Alhamdulillah, the election took place in very uh, peaceful, peaceful uh, manner. The Lebanese people uh, made their point by giving their voice and their trust to those who defended the land. And we know those who defended the land and the dignity and the honor of Lebanon had won the majority of the Lebanese parliament. So I would like to offer my congratulations to Lebanon and to the Lebanese people and to those who honored the dignity of Lebanon. And my, finally, my dear brothers and sisters, okay, also, yesterday there, yesterday, there was another conspicuous attack, terrorist attack, that hardly got the attention of the new major uh, news outlet. And that was a Shia Muslim masjid in South Africa, Masjid al-Imam al Hussein, in the city of Durban, not Dearborn, Durban, in South Africa was attacked by three Wahhabi terrorists who entered the masjid, set it in fire, and they killed the three worshippers while they were praying the Dhuhr prayer. So this is, this is the legacy of the, the Saudi regime. This is the legacy of the Wahhabi regime, spreading death and murder around the world, and yet receiving the blessings of our own president, President Donald Trump. My dear brothers and sisters, I also would like to remind you that, yes, that tomorrow, uh, Wednesday, th uh, the office of Al Marhum Al Sayyid Fadlallah announced that Wednesday will be the first day of Ramadan. So, for the followers of Sayyid Fadlallah, Wednesday will be the first day of Ramadan. For the followers of other respected maraja, Thursday will be the first of Ramadan. 
Each person follows his taqlid and there is no issue, should be no issue here at all. And I guess on Wednesday most of us will be fasting anyway, either mustahab or wajib. So this should not be an issue. And here at IIA we will be accommodating all our brothers and sisters, whether you follow this merger or that merger, this center does not belong to any group and we will be honoring everybody. Our first night of Ramadan program will be on Wednesday night and we will be celebrating the night of power in six nights and a and instead of three nights, which is perfectly fine. And instead of reciting Dua al-Jawshan three nights, we will be reciting Dua al-Jawshan six nights. Anything wrong with that? Extra blessing. So we will be starting, inshallah, Wednesday night, our first night of Ramadan program. The flyer says Thursday, but no, we will be starting our program on Wednesday night, inshallah, as it is mentioned, 10.30, our dear brother Hajj Ahmed will be reciting Dua Al-Iftitah. And 11 p.m., uh, we will be starting uh, the, the, the main lecture, inshallah. Tonight, for those who already purchased the ticket, Hajj Ali is giving me, Hajj Ali Faiz is giving me this to remind you. The tickets were sold out, all sold out. So there is no need for me to promote the dinner. Yes, but, but I would like to emphasize donating tonight, my dear brothers and sisters. I would like to encourage you, those who already purchased their tickets, to attend our dinner. There is no need for me to extra emphasize the need for you to help and extend the hand of help to your institution. Please do whatever you can to support your own institution tonight. And I count on you. And after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I always relied on you and on your support and your generosity. And by the way, you can consider whatever donation you give tonight to IIA, part of your khums and zakah. So you can hit two birds with one stone, pay your khums and zakah and help a, an Islamic, a leading Islamic institute in the in this great country. Allahumma kfir lil mu'minina wal mu'minat wal muslimina wal muslimat al ahya'i minhum wal amwat tabi allahumma baynana wa baynahum bil khayrat innaka mujibu al-da'awat innaka qadhi al-hajat innaka ala kulli shay'in qadir wa ila arwah al-mu'minina wal mu'minat wa li shifai mardana wa qadai hawaijina نقرأ السورة المباركة الفاتحة My dear brothers and sisters Throughout the month of Ramadan we need volunteers Volunteers who would organize the, the program every night The traffic, the uh, babysitting room and etc. We need 20 volunteers, brothers and sisters, 20 volunteers. We need your help, my dear brothers and sisters. This is your place. It doesn't belong to any individual. We need 20 volunteers. Those who are interested in volunteering, please send a text message with one word, volunteer, meaning you are willing to be a volunteer. Send a text message to this number. I'm going to mention the number twice. Please make a note of it. 313-995-5505. I shall repeat. إذا حابين تكونون متطوعين في شهر رمضان في المؤسسة المباركة هنا ابعث بتكس مسج إلى الرقم التالي 313-995-5505. One more time. 313-995-5505. Also, there is a list with our, our dear brother, Muhammad Taqi Shafi'i. Stand up, brother Muhammad Taqi. If you would like to put your name there, you can do this. Ikhwa li hubbuni khalloon asma'um ka mutatawwa'een. Ikhwa wa akhawat ma'a al-akh Muhammad Taqi Shafi'i. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر